All right, so I'm on YouTube.com, and I'm going to um, create this account. So uh, at the top right corner, I've got to sign in. Uh, the good news is that because we created a Google Plus account, we'll be able to uh, create the YouTube account pretty easily. Yeah, you want to use the same login that you used for when we created Google Plus. If you don't have that information anymore, you can create a new account. So I'm on YouTube.com. I'm going to click Sign In at the top right corner. We'll ask for the email and the password. Go ahead and sign in with the uh, with the account you've created before for Google Plus or your Gmail account. If you want to create a brand new account, you can click More Options, Create Account. You can sign in to that Gmail account, and then I'll show you what to do next. Uh, you use your Gmail account to sign in to uh, to YouTube. You can go back to YouTube.com and then use that password. So this is probably going to be different for a lot of people. Feel free to, to, to stop me if it's very different. Um, you just want to sign in, use your Gmail account or Google Plus account to sign into YouTube.com, and then we'll take it from there. You may get a pop-up that, like mine was a pop-up at the top left that says, you want to show notifications. I'm going to click no, or I'm going to click block. You can allow it if you want. Uh, that's just notifications for you to get updates when something changes on YouTube. Leave it off. If you get this pop up, show notifications, I'll just block that. I don't really need that. It, YouTube will tell you notifications anyway, but this is extra ones. And this, I think it's annoying because even if you're not on YouTube, it's going to pop up and tell you something's happening on YouTube. And I think I've got way too much to look at to have yet another alert to tell me to look at something. Hopefully, people's screens are not too different because, again, YouTube might show the old interface or the new interface. At the top right corner, I have this little, uh, this little person icon. If you click on that, um, you might see some things. Uh, I see something that says more accounts, creator studio, etc. YouTube has two ways. YouTube has two ways that this works, either as a consumer or as a creator. So we need to switch between the two. Here's as a consumer or a creator. Consumer default which is watch videos, comment on videos, etc. Creator is you upload videos, check stats, make money. Those are the two big ideas with YouTube. Did you find uh, the right spot? So uh, everyone um, by default has a consumer account. 
which is to watch videos on YouTube and such. We want a creator account. On the top right corner is where you, where you do that. In my case, uh, this account, when I click my icon on the top right corner, um, I see that it has Creator Studio. It may or may not, for, for people, again, if it's very different, to tell me. But uh, does everyone see a button that says Creator Studio? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and click Creator Studio. Creator, when you click that Creator Studio button, then it switches you over to the YouTube Creator View. This is where I upload videos, check my stats, do all of that. Regular YouTube, you can get back to it by clicking the YouTube logo. So now here I'm, I'm on YouTube uh, as for uh, consumer. So remember, clicking on your icon at the top right, you can go back to the Creator Studio. I've used this account before, but it should be the same as yours. Nothing really to look at. Zero views, zero subscribers. This is where you um, will upload videos and such. Before that, I want to look at a few settings. Uh, we can set up these options before we upload so that it saves us some effort. So on the left side we have Dashboard, which gives you an overview about here's the videos you've uploaded, here's some tips that might make your channel better, etc. Video Manager, there's nothing really to look at there. But here's where you can manage your videos and your playlists. Uploading videos, renaming them, deleting them, putting them into playlists for organization under Video Manager. There's a live streaming that we're not going to get into, but that's the, the new generation of, of using YouTube and other networks, which is turn on the camera live and you're, you're, you're talking to your followers. You don't edit your video, you don't exactly put text and sound and all of that. You have to do that in the software, Movie Maker, iMovie, etc. This live streaming is live. If you make mistakes, if you fall over, it's live. You can't really edit it out. So we're not going to really cover that. Community is a screen where you will see the comments. This is where they, you will see held for review. So we have to first activate that option. We're getting to there. But this is where you will see. These are all the comments that have been added to your videos. I believe from here you can then select them and delete them. But here also is where, after you activate it, you too will see these comments have not been activated yet. Look at them to choose to delete them approve them, mark them as spam, whatever. And then YouTube is going to try to uh, mark the ones that are probably spam, and it does a pretty good job. It can understand this comment is just an advertisement and spam, but you can review them here and then choose to show them or not. So, um, We've also got messages. We can uh, communicate back and forth with people privately. Messages won't appear on the rest of the YouTube account. You can uh, communicate with people back and forth. It's another kind of inbox to, to work with. Subscribers, a list of all the people that have subscribed to you, but only subscribers who share their subscriptions publicly. Like most networks, you can set this to be public, you can set it to be private. Someone can use YouTube privately so their, their information won't be visible to you. It'll say, I've got two subscribers, but then when I look at this screen, it looks empty. Well, that's because those people have chosen to hide themselves on YouTube. You'll know that you've got a subscriber, but you can't see who it is. And that's very common. On these other accounts that I have, it says, you know, 400 subscribers, but if you actually s sit down and count, maybe there's like 302, because people turn privacy on. But the point here is to see who's followed me, and that way, just like the other networks, I can sort of chat with them directly, message them directly, market to them directly. 
community setting. Let's take a quick look here. Um, this is going to have a bunch of options that are useful for you. So, filters, community settings, um, moderators. You can have other people help you run your account, but they need a YouTube channel also. You need the other person's YouTube address, and you can just get it from the top bar. You go to their address, you copy that address, and then you paste it. So then other people can help you moderate or work with this account. That relates to approved users and hidden users and blocked words. So these make sense, hopefully, and if you need more help, there's a help button. But these are keywords that if someone writes on your videos, they will automatically be blocked. Live chat matching words will be blocked. So if people want to watch you live, this also blocks them. Block anything that's a link in their comment. This is off by default. Um, I usually never really turn it on because we will see another option that will um, let us uh, moderate better. Right here, default settings. Comments on your new videos. Currently, allow all comments. So any good or bad or weird or spam comment will show up. The opposite completely of that is disable comments. Don't let anyone write anything on your video. And you might not really uh, hurt yourself if you disable the comments, because I don't think the comments have much value for your, for your YouTube account. In the middle is the one I recommend, hold all comments for review. So the good ones and the bad ones will not appear until you go to community comments and then approve them. So it's extra work because you'll have to go in there and approve the good comments, but I think the protection from the bad comments outweighs it. People can comment on individual videos and people can comment on your whole channel. They can go to the home page of your channel and comment. Here's another one that you may want to not allow until you say okay. Creator credits, honestly, I don't really know what this one's about, but this is most likely related to the uh, moderators and collaborators that other people can help you with. Allow their credit to appear by the video or hold it until you allow it. But if you're already connected with someone that you've approved, why do you still need to allow their credit? So however you want to set that one, that one is completely up to you. I don't have an opinion. I, let, I leave it alone. These two, I really recommend you put them into hold for review. Yes? I'm afraid of them for the lock. I open my account but I cannot find the pages that you're on. First, uh, you need to make sure you click on your icon at the top right and go to the Creator Studio. And once you're in the Creator Studio on the left panel, you will see Community. And we're currently under Community Settings. Oh. If you make any changes to this screen, you want to remember to save. Yes? Uh, you can have only one channel? No, you can actually have more than one if you click here and click More Accounts. You can so have here is the comment on the specific channel? On this specific channel, yes. You would have to change your settings for every channel if you make three. So how we can choose the channel? It's going to be on this screen here. Once you make more channels, they will be listed here. I've only got one channel, so there's one. But once I, once I make more of them, they will be listed all right here. Uh, I'll be, I'll be made the channel. However you want, but it depends on what the, what the channel is about. This one is a simple test channel, so it just has test. But I can name it a, a channel like Victor's Bakery, or I can name it as... Uh, you know, travel advice channel, or I can name it as uh, the realty resource. So I can name these channels however we want about what the videos are. Yes, exactly. Technical channel. Mm -hmm. Different topics. Comic channel. Yes. Where do you as, you as, much as, you want. as many as you want, yes. Question. Where do you enter the title of your channel? 
that is going to be right over here on this next uh, screen we're going to get to one moment. We have a whole uh, bunch of channel things to edit, so we'll get to that one moment. The last item under community is credits, and this is the part here about Again, I don't have much experience with this part because I don't work with a lot of people that help me make these videos. So I don't know how fully this works, but this is if you have a director, an actor, a writer, their credits will appear here. I don't exactly know how, it's, how it works, but there is learn more. That's credits. Let's look at channel. Here's in a variety of important options. At the very top first it says, you might see a button that says verify. I have not verified this channel because it's just a testing account. But verifying your channel is not very complex and I recommend you do it to unlock more features. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to click it, but you should at some point because you have these various features. Notice, um, ineligible for this, this has not been enabled. You get these extra YouTube features once you've verified your channel. This is channel status. I don't have any copyright infringements or community guidelines, but it decreases, which I think is opposite. Usually we see it left to right. But this channel is in good standing. There's nothing regarding copyright. I didn't steal any songs. I didn't steal other people's work. It looks fine. Um, there's also guidelines against, you know, I don't know, profanity and all of that stuff. So this this account is fine. The, re the reason to care about this is that if these lower, if they get lower, your, your account could be shut down. There are these community rules that YouTube in enforces because it's their channel, it's their property, the YouTube account. But um, I've never really uh, worked with anyone, clients or myself, that have gotten into any trouble doing it the right way, which is using, you know, stock images, using original uh, music, and in a little bit we'll get over to the creator, the create screen, where that's where you can get all this free music. We'll look at it later. Question. Yes? How do you change the, the name of the channel? Because the choice here is my name, which I don't want it. So how do you change that? Well, that's what we're looking at here. Uh, we're getting through these different oh, okay. buttons in one at a time. <laughs> So this account has the ability to upload. Um, there's a very simple video editor that apparently they're going to shut down. Built into YouTube, there's a very simple way to add text and sounds. And I hardly ever used it because Movie Maker is better, iMovie is better, Premiere is better. But sometimes it was useful to use this quick editor to remove uh, something at the end of the video. Apparently they're going to remove it next month. Monetization. This is the ability to make money off of your YouTube. Mine says ineligible because I haven't fully set up this account. This is to verify it. Um, this is to verify it. Once you've verified, you're able to make money off of your videos. And all of these things. Live stream. I'm not going to look at every single one, but can you make videos private? Can you make longer videos? At the moment, because I haven't verified, I've only got a length of 15 minutes for videos. If I want longer videos, I have to enable it, I have to verify. <laughs> Custom URL. I'm ineligible. See the requirements. And that's changing the name. Changing it from uh, the gibberish name or my name to something else. It's, it's going to be a custom URL, which I require. Let me confirm, because they change all the time. It should say that you need 100. Let's see, eligibility. Yep, you still need 100 subscribers. You need to have the account at least 30 days old. You need to have uploaded a photo or icon to your channel and channel art. We'll see how to do that in a moment. But in order to change your name, change your address, you need these requirements. So I'm ineligible. What does URL stand for, please? Universal Resource Locator which is just the address of, of your website. Yes? You can tell what your URL is right now by going to... Let's see, where did they put it? You go back to Dashboard, 
and then you'll see View Channel. Back on the dashboard, View Channel, and then the address at the very top, the URL, that's, that's my channel. So I currently have this gibberish. Most of us do. get back to that in a moment. Uh, but here's some channel settings. Upload defaults. Let's look at this for a moment. We will see that when we upload a video, we have all of these options to set for the video. We will have the ability to set it public, unlisted, or private. So types of videos, types of YouTube videos, Public, unlisted, private, and there's also scheduled. So public. Anyone can uh, search, find, view your videos with or without the URL, the link to the video. Unlisted only way for people to see the video is with the URL. The link, the direct link to the video. They're not going to find your video by searching, by subscribing to you. It's on YouTube, but people cannot see it unless they have the address to the video. This is the unlisted option. It's like in the real world, your phone number is in the phone book by default. Everyone can find you in the phone book. You have to pay to be unlisted. They take away your phone number from the phone book. But if someone has your phone, they can still call you. Just because you're not in the phone book, they can't doesn't mean they can't find you. And private YouTube is that no one can see your video. The end. No one can see it. Only you. It's on your YouTube channel. You have it there for some reason. No one can see it. Maybe temporarily you, you don't want people to see it, but then you'll reveal it to people. Actually, there is a way to let more people see your private video, but it's cumbersome because you have to approve individual by individual. You have to email people individually through the YouTube system with a special link to the video. And only those people, only that person with their email is approved to watch the video. So even if they have your link and they forward it to someone else, they will not be able to see your video because that address is tied to the email account you sent it to. So short answer, no one can see it because it's not easy to only approve seven people to watch it. You have to do each of their email addresses individually and you have to manage it and it's kind of annoying scheduled. Video will become public or unlisted uh, at a certain time that you specify. So this is like the other networks. And I know that every month I'm going to release a new video at the start of the month. Maybe I spent a weekend creating seven videos and I'm going to set it that each of those videos appears every Monday of the first of the month. So I schedule those videos for the next seven months, date and time, so that they automatically appear. You can set that by default here. When you upload any new video, you can set the privacy of the video. You can decide which of them works for you, but most likely everyone's going to choose public. I want as many people as possible to see my video. Uh, there's a few instances why you may use unlisted, like a special video that you can only watch if you're subscribed to my newsletter or you have my business card, but most videos will be public. Yes? Am I seeing the schedule on the drop down because of my current privacy settings? No, you, you won't see it until at the moment you upload the video. Okay. Because you have to set that on a case by case basis. This one cannot be set in general. Category. So we've got a few categories, not that many, but where does your video best fit in so that people can more easily find your 
video. So let's say, so this is Victor's Bakery. Um, I don't really see anything about food. So where, where might you say it could fit my food channel? Well, maybe I have recipes. So how to. Um, entertainment, close enough. So there's not a lot of ch uh, categories for you to organize your videos. That's why you're going to rely more on title, description, and tags in a moment. But if you're often uploading tutorials, you may set it to how-to, and that way you have one less thing to set every time you upload a video. This license, um, this is about copyrights. When you upload your video, you'll have the standard license, which is that it's your video, you copyrighted, you own it, basically. Creative Commons is that you're sort of uploading it as a uh, public domain work, meaning um, you know it can be reused. Um, it's sort of copyright copyrightless. It still requires attribution that people at least give you credit for your video. Either of these works just fine. The standard works fine for most people. Some people want to create videos that are Creative Commons, meaning anyone can use them. Great, put it out to the world, just give me some credit. Whereas technically the one on top here, it's your copyrighted material. But like any social media, you're not going to really be able to put the genie back in the bottle. Once you upload your video, it can be shared and reshared, copied. There is software out there to download YouTube videos. There's no button on YouTube to download a video. But there is software out there that will do it somehow. So if you put something online, you have to understand that it's probably going to get out of your hands. You have to be OK with it. Title and description. You may be uploading videos with, a, with, a, with the same sort of topic over and over. So when I showed uh, you know, the video that we created last week, that's my Tech Review Tuesday. So maybe I want the words Tech Review Tuesday to appear every time, and then I will customize each video as necessary. So this will appear automatically every time I upload. Yes? With search engine, uh, when you write some words, they're going to search on the titles? You're going to search on the titles, the description, and the tags. Everything. Mm -hmm. So then description is also important here. If the search engines are going to use these things to find you, you may want to put something here that by default always appears. So maybe uh, I always want to start my video saying, how to, and then I fill in the rest. Or maybe I want my website to always appear first. So that will automatically appear on the descriptions of all of my videos, and then I can add more as much as I want. There's no limit here. and those uh, text will help you get found. And tags are the same sort of idea. So tutorial, how to, HTML, code. These are keywords that people might also search for. So I can fill in here some tags that constantly people, constantly that I will use that I've figured out that people are searching for. How I figure that out will come a little bit later when we look at the analytics. By default, the comments, we set it on that other screen, and I'm not sure how it differs from this screen. But here also, it says allow comments, no comments. Allow comments all automatically or until they're approved. So this setting seems to be exactly the same as that other screen. I'm not sure why it's in two places, and I'm not sure which one takes precedence. So if you set one screen, you should set it the same here, which is allow comments until approved. So the ratings, a thumbs up and thumbs down. You can only really turn it on or off. You can't approve thumbs up or thumbs down. A person can like it or dislike it. Do you want to show that? Maybe your videos have a lot of thumbs down for some reason. Popularity breeds popularity, and negativity breeds negativity. So if people see that your video has a lot of views and a lot of thumbs up, 
that'll probably get you more. If people see you've got a lot of thumbs down, that creates also a psychological effect that people will also dislike it. So this cannot really be um, controlled very much, show those ratings or not. You can set the language of your video, English or one of, other, one of 189 other languages. Um, you can only really set one at a time. So the video, the, the default of my video, Spanish, Greek, Greenlandic, Farsi, etc. So you can uh, set the default language to target the people of that language a lot easier. Uh, YouTube can analyze your video and give you suggestions, which I think are not useful. These suggestions are going to say, your video is too shaky. Would you like us to activate shake removal, which never really works that well. It'll say, your video seems to be too dark. Would you like us to brighten it, which might not really work that well. So I don't really like these suggestions. These things should be taken care of before you upload your video. Use iMovie, Movie Maker, etc. to edit your video, brighten it up, fix the volume, fix the shakiness before you upload it. Because these automated ones don't work very well. If your video is constantly shot at a certain location, like your the address of your business, you can um, can add it there so that your video is attached to a location. People can search that too. And then there's also there's also this other one about these other stats, your number of views. Up here is the ratings and up here is the views. If you don't want people to see the number, your number of views, you can turn that off. Oh, and one more here. Uh, allow viewers to contribute. So if someone, I, I hardly ever see anyone using these, but if you have the time and the effort and the expertise, you can help caption someone's video or they can caption yours. You know, someone can help translate your video to another language. This is off by default, I believe, so it's not used at all, really, because it's off by default. The negativity about that, of course, is that people can upload anything, and I don't know that language, and I'm going to say, yes, approve it. So it could be spam. If you make any changes here, remember to save. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. On the suggest video improvements, do you recommend that we show? That's the one I recommend. Never show these. I don't think they're that useful. I personally turn it off. Okay. Next is featured content. I can't do this right now, but as I upload videos, I can have a video or a playlist that is constantly promoted to my followers. Not even followers, but viewers. So if I've got three videos, I can choose one of them when my video is about to end, it might suggest, why not watch this one? So this is pretty useful. Once you've got two or three or five or ten videos, you can guide people to watch a certain video. Um, when you're writing your description, can you put a link to like your Facebook and Instagram and your website? Yeah, you can put any link and that link will be active. And people can follow it. Where's the... Um, how do you link it? You just type the address. So if I'm typing, don't forget to buy our products, and then you just type the address. Oh, you have to do the full thing for Instagram. So you can't just do like at. No. The at doesn't work in, in YouTube. So you would need the full address to where you need people to go to. Yeah, if you know how to use these short, short links like bit.ly. Any active link here, as long as it's got the full HTTP part, will go to the site. And what's Bitly? 
it's a way to shorten an address because sometimes you have a really long address by my product now. You go to bitly.com, B-I-T-L-Y, and it will shorten the address to something just a little bit shorter and more memorable. Would you mind putting that on the notes? Sure. Yes. Bitly. I use it all the time for my Facebook ads because I want to point to a specific page, mm -hmm. and it's a really long address, and Bitly is just free. It's just, just plug in your link, and it'll give you a short name. Okay. Can you use it for a PDF? The PDF has to be online somewhere. Then you can grab the address to the PDF and make it a bit.ly link. It creates short links to a long link, useful for tracking traffic. Uh, there's a handle here first. One moment, yes. Um, just a little bit about that comments, the two little boxes we checked. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't that already made a decision on the defaults yeah. before we do? Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure why they've got it here and there. And I don't know which one takes precedence. But you'd want to turn both off if you didn't. Want you'd want to set them both the same. Yeah. Question? Uh, if we uploaded a video on the audio social network, you can once you have the video file yeah. you can upload it here into into YouTube and it will also be on YouTube so the ones about Instagram and snapchat those feel a little bit more temporary this feels a little more permanent so just you copy paste the address of the link no, you have to upload the actual file. Uh, my question is that you cannot direct it from no. Instagram send a file to YouTube? No, because they're competitors. YouTube doesn't want to make it easy. They want you to use only YouTube, not Instagram. So the only easy way is to download the file? Mm -hmm. or well, when you, when you record it on Instagram, it gets saved to the phone. So then you copy it from the phone to the desktop and then to YouTube. So we cannot copy from our phone to YouTube. You could. You have if you have the YouTube app. Okay. So you created the Instagram video and then you use the YouTube app to upload it to YouTube. Well, the from the phone. Time. Yeah, they're all they're all the same. The video gets saved to the network, but you still keep a copy on your phone where then you can send it to other networks. So the only way that we can copy directly I think is just Google Plus. Yes, because it's Google Plus, it, it's the same system. Google yeah. Plus, YouTube, Google, it's all the same system. That's the only one. Branding is a way for you to add a watermark. Wait, one more thing. Featured content. Little commercial. If you've got a video, I think the maximum is one minute. If you've got a video that's an advertisement for your channel, you can set it so that it appears when someone visits your channel as the first thing. So a self-promotional type of video for your for your channel. And you still get paid for self-promotional advertising? If an ad runs on it, yes, because the way we make money is through the ads. So then under branding, you can put a watermark, a little icon of your video in the corner of your video. And it's also an active link. So if your video ends up on someone else's website, your icon will still be on the video, and then someone can click that icon and take you back to your YouTube channel. So we want that. We want our video to go everywhere, not just on YouTube. I want people to share it on their Twitter or their blog, but I would recommend you set your watermark so that it has that branding to lead people back to your account. And this has to be a graphic that you design. It's a little square graphic, either GIF or PIN format. It says here, the better ones are a simple color with a transparent background instead of a very complex graphic, one megabyte size. Would you put your logo up there? Yeah. 
This will be added to all your videos for branding. Channel advanced. All right, here's one of these important questions finally answered. How do I change the name of my channel? Advanced. Channel advanced options. This is called Victor's test channel. You want to change that, click there. You want to change the icon, click there. It's going to take you over to some other screen for you to change this. Country that you're targeting, you can set that. Here's also various keywords about the whole channel, another spot for keywords to help you get found. Can you separate them with commas? Just spaces is fine. So I can do tutorial space how to space. And is there a, a maximum amount of words you can use? I'm not exactly sure because they change it. Sometimes I read that they will only look at the first 10 words. And sometimes they change it to say they allow more words. So I'd be safe with 10 words. You can put more than that and it might help you. But I would say the most important words are the first 10 words. So advertisements. Um, the way we make money off of YouTube is by allowing ads to run on our videos. Just like you're watching TV and there's an ad, and you listen to the radio, there's an ad, or you're on Facebook and there's an ad. It's all about advertising, and we hate it. But now we love it on YouTube because it makes us money. If we allow YouTube to put ads on our videos, and people click on those videos, we make money. So that'll be monetization in a moment, but to make the notes here, how to profit from YouTube. Verify your channel. You see that was under channel status. It's a few steps. You can follow the steps, but you're going to verify your channel to activate the feature. Activate monetization. That's also in the channel status. Then allow ads on your videos. Basically, don't turn this off here. Advertisements. Channel advanced. Channel status is it on, isn't it on channel advanced? Well, to verify is under channel status. Oh, yeah. But then to uh, allow the advertisements is on channel advance. Okay. So uh, allow ads on your channel, which is channel advanced. How to program from your YouTube, verify your channel, activate monetization, allow ads on your video, and then upload uh, videos that people want to watch. These two are the harder ones. The other ones are just click a couple of things. These are the harder ones, of course. This is the, the hard thing about the whole three months of the sequence. I'm not getting followers. I'm not getting subscribers. Well, you're not being active. Your photos aren't that good. Your content is not great. That's the part I can't teach. But websites like Social Media Examiner, again, will have plenty of articles on great ideas for making YouTube videos because then uh, eventually it pays off. Like I said, I've got these four different channels. I'll show them after the break. I've got these different channels where I'm, uh, I'm, I'm making money from four different ideas, a tech channel, a finance channel, a comic channel, and I'm just uploading stuff on, uh, on a regular basis, and that's, that's making me a little money. That's a little bit of icing on the cake. Obviously, I'm not paying the rent with that. I'm, I'm able to buy you know, a couple of lattes with that once in a while, but uh, the more you get good at it and the more followers and views you have, that could be profiting you pretty well. There's an option here, disable interest-based ads. I would not turn this on. The defaults of yes and no is what you should keep. This one is saying interest-based. Show ads to people that they are going to be more interested in clicking 
you don't make money just because ads appear. You make money when people click those ads. So if you've got a tech video and a tech ad appears, they're more likely to click and you profit. If you've got a tech video and you turn off interest-based, it may put a, a video about clothing or food that doesn't relate to tech, so they don't click, you don't profit. So you get gains when they click on it or when they purchase something? Only when they click, really. No. So purchasing is still more difficult. You don't get really paid for that. Simply they click, they go to that website, whatever, you make a little money. They don't, it's not like an affiliates and all of that where you make money if they buy. So that's kind of good. I don't have to rely on a sale for me to profit. Yes? I don't think I understand the little statement underneath allow advertisements to display be displayed alongside my videos. It says this does not apply to videos that you monetize. Maybe I don't understand what monetizing the video is. It's not the monetizing my video is not the same as earning money when someone clicks on the interest based ad or any ad. Monetization is making money off of people clicking on the ads on your video. It is. What this is saying is do, do you want us to show videos that people will want to click on or random, I mean, ads, that people will want to click on or random ads? So we want to leave it off because if I've got a tech video, I want a tech ad to appear. Yeah, now I actually moved on to the, um, the first the line of type underneath the word advertisements where you do have a check mark and it says allow advertisements to be displayed. Mm -hmm. But then it says it does not apply to videos that you want to monetize. That seems to me to be contrary to the first sentence. So I, I don't understand why I don't understand it. It seems like they are. It does not apply to videos other. that you monetize, videos that are claimed. You can override this on a case by case basis. This is setting options for everything at once. But on individual videos, I can also allow or disallow ads. So that's what it's saying. As you monetize individual videos. So if you say, don't show any ads. Right. If I monetize a video individually, I'm going to say, this video will make me ads, but not this one. That's why this option does then not take into account. So short answer, leave them like I say here. <laughs> what, what's the short answer? Short answer, leave them how I'm telling you here. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a video that I go well, on a channel that I go every morning. And uh, so when I hit skip, is still the person getting No. Ready. No. When you skip, uh, they don't profit. Okay. So you have to write the whole thing. No, no, no. You have to click on the ad. You have to click on the ad, not, oh, okay. not skip or watch. They don't get paid if you watch it either. You have to click on the ad that I do want that, you know, I do want that product. You don't have to actually buy it, but if you click the ad, uh, that's when they profit. They don't profit if you skip, and they don't profit if you watch the whole thing. You have to click. And this is what was said earlier. Don't click on your own ads, because if they figure that out, then they'll shut down your whole system, and if you were making money, if you were one dollar away from your payout and they find out that you were cheating the system, your money goes away. And uh, you can't fight for it at all because their contract when you set up monetization says basically we're in charge, you can do, can't do anything about it, you have to follow our rules. And I've been doing this for a few years and I've never had that problem because you know I don't click on my own ads. You don't, you don't want to do that. So you don't have control over the ads and that's going to be a new video, right? Exactly. You don't have control except here don't turn this one on because then you have even less control. If you leave it off, it will show ads related to your video. So a cooking video, my cooking video, will get ads related to cooking, so someone might click. If I say here, disable that, my cooking video might get an ad about pets. Why would I click on a pet ad if I'm watching a video about cooking? And then we've got AdWords. We're not going to get into this, but AdWords is a, is a way for you. This is how you can boost your videos on YouTube. You can pay for your videos to be viewed by more people. Just like you can pay on the other networks to boost your posts, you can boost your videos. So that's 
something you could do if you want, but that somewhat defeats the purpose of you getting paid off of YouTube. Although probably if you invest some amount in boosting that could then result in more clicks and sales and such. Recommendations, I would leave this one on because I want my channel to appear for other people as well. If someone is in one tech channel, I want my tech channel to also be recommended. If you don't want that, you're going to really lose a lot of traffic because then you have to put all the work yourself to get visibility. In the beginning, when you have zero subscribers, it might not be so good of an ego boost to show that. So you can turn off show the number of subscribers. But once you get 20 or 30 or 100 or 1,000, you can say, yeah, look at all my subscribers, because popularity beats popularity. People see that you've got lots of videos, lots of traffic, lots of views, lots of subscribers. It entices people more to subscribe. Zero subscribers, I kind of feel like, well, no one's subscribing. Why would I? So you can turn it off temporarily. And if you have Google Analytics set up, you can put your Google Analytics code here to get even more stats in your Google Analytics control panel. Um, what is the AdWords again? That's for the ability to boost your videos so more people can see them by paying. Oh, okay. All right, so that's a bunch of settings for channel. You set them once, you don't really have to deal with them after that. We'll look at two more things very quickly, then we'll take a break, then we'll upload our video. Analytics, nothing much to look at there. I don't have any videos, but you will see lots of stats here. In total, how many views, specified by time period, one month, one year, whatever in real time, what's my most popular, what are the videos people are looking at right now. And just a lot of detail. Who's my audience? How, how long have they watched my videos? That's the one right there you want to check. How, how much are people paying attention? All my videos are 20 minutes long, and this tells me that people are only watching 6 minutes. So then I should create videos that are 6 minutes long. Demographics about age and gender will be listed there. Countries. You might discover you've got a big population of people from Canada that are watching your videos. So that's going to give me the, the idea. I'm going to put the keyword Canada in my title or my description or my tags. It's, it'll tell me my subscribers, who they are, how, which videos have gotten my most likes and dislikes, comments, and all of that. Translations, this is a spot here to translate your, your videos, to get people to help you translate your videos. Create. Very useful screen right here. Audio library, video editor, which is going to go away eventually. Free music or sound effects. Thousands of songs in a variety of styles for you to use on your videos. Um, speaking of analytics, isn't there a way that you can go on Google and see what words are used the most? Yes, if you've got a Google Analytics account, um, using the tools there will help you figure out those keywords. Isn't there like um, just like a web, like even if you don't have a Google I think there's a, I think you're thinking of Google Trends, which I don't think is, is as useful as Google Analytics. Google Trends is just a quick way to kind of see like, you know, what's in the news? People are not paying attention as much anymore. Game of Thrones. Well, you know, this is some information, but really to focus, you, you want to look at, um, you want to look at Google Analytics. This audio library is really nice because you can really, really organize it. Uh, what are the genres? I want to. I want some jazzy music to my project. Uh, hip hop, reggae, 
classical. I can choose that. I can choose a mood. Give me some uh, some bright music. Etc. So you can hear the different uh, moods. Instrument, I want to focus on uh, electric guitar. Well, let's see what's under organ. Which is also under reggae. Then we've got duration. If I need a, a, a song that's a certain length, I have here some some items here. So I know I'm going to make videos that are one minute long. I can choose one minute. This will give me all of these that are one minute or so. Like Evil Plan. Some of these have a little person icon. These are the ones. They're all, all the sounds are free to use, but these that have a person mean attribution, meaning you need to give credit. The ones that don't have that icon means you don't have to give any credit at all. I would recommend use the ones without requirement of attribution, because I forget. I forget to put this. It wants me to copy and paste this little block of text here into my YouTube video if I use that song in the description. I'm going to forget. and Then I'm violating the terms and my video could get shut down. So what I would recommend on the attribution column, set it to attribution not required. You still get thousands of songs, but now you don't have that annoyance of having to remember to credit the original artist the way they want you to. So whatever you set anywhere else here, I first recommend set it to no attribution. Could you put that in your notes? That's yeah. very important. Yes. So YouTube Creator, what do they call it? Uh, create Audio Library. Thousands of sounds. Uh, songs and uh, sound clips for free to use. However, use the attribution not required filter to avoid giving credits. So you definitely don't want to use that Beatles song. You don't want to use that Michael Jackson song. You don't want to use that Usher song. You don't want to use any song from a real band. You want to use music from here. There's a lot of styles of music that you might like. Uh, there's really no way for you to legally use that favorite song in your video. You have to pay thousands of dollars for, your, for that right. Instead, use one of these free ones and then also make it easier on yourself, attribution not required. This column on the right over here, this bar, is popularity. From what I've searched here, one minute long, attribution not required, this is a very popular song. Other people on YouTube have downloaded this song and used it in their project. You may or may not care this song. Other people like it, they've used it. Comparatively, not many people have used this song. Less people here and here. So I personally like to find music that has a low popularity so that other people haven't used it and mine stands out. These that have the higher one, um, you know, other people have used this one. It's been popular for people. I don't know how many. It doesn't tell me 10,000 downloads or 7 downloads. It's all relative to what you're looking at. So one minute long, using the base, takes it down to here, and then now other songs are more or less popular. That sounds exactly from, you know, Hollywood blockbuster. I didn't have to pay for it, and I can use it in my videos. 
And as you scroll down, you'll get more and more results. Okay. Yes? This is where I got my music. The music that we used last week, I got it from here. Okay. So you, you would log into your YouTube account, you would go to the audio library, browse around for some music, download it, the little download button, and then add it to Movie Maker. Okay, so Movie Maker just has music. You download it. Yes. Alright, I missed that. Thank you. Now let's see this one. So yeah, I've when I make videos, I have the footage, but then I browse the music selections here a little bit. And based on that, then I figure out how I can synchronize the music with the videos, the visuals. That Comic-Con music video I showed previously, uh, that's what I did. I had all of this footage. I didn't have an idea of how to put it together. I went with the music. I found like three tracks. I downloaded them. I heard them a few times. So well, I like this part, how it kind of builds up. And I like that there's a lot of beats in the music. I'll use that one to put my video together. You download it and then use it in iMovie or Movie Maker. It gives it to you right there as an MP3. I downloaded it. I can use it. Like Ludwig von Dubstep. And then there's also at the top, you'll see sound effects. So this is less common for most people, but here's where I can get these various sounds. Sneakers running on light grit. Someone's running. I can search cat. Cat purr. So you can search um, sound effects, complete music. All of these under sound effects uh, are under the no attribution required. But the ones under free music, there's attribution or not. And I just, I don't even want to know. I don't even listen to any of these before I switch it to attribution. Because I might hear a really nice one, which I'm going to forget to give the attribution. So I just quickly change it to attribution not required and don't even listen to them because I don't want to tempt myself and get the one that I, I'm going to make a mistake on. Okay, let's uh, take one more uh, break, short one, until 12.20, so it's eight minutes. Let's take a break until 12.20, and when we come back, we'll upload the video, and then we'll see uh, what that looks like.